Bank, which is part of the United Nations system, the exposure to outdoor and indoor air pollution costs more than 5 trillion US dollars to the world's economy in welfare losses for the year 2013. The principal welfare losses stem from premature deaths caused by exposure to air pollutants, namely, in descending order of importance, outdoor fine particles, indoor air pollutants from the use of solid fuels and ambient ozone. Depending on the world's regions, these losses correspond from 2.2 to 7.5% of the GDP. For the year 2015, a study from the OECD calculated welfare costs with a similar order of magnitude of 3 trillion US dollars, corresponding to 6% of the global GDP. In comparison, the three main market impacts of air pollution, namely reduced labor productivity, increased health expenditure and crop yield losses, accounted only for less than 1% of the global GDP in 2015. 60, compared to the year 2015, the OECD foresees a substantial increase of both costs. From 0.6 to 1.5% of the GDP for market costs, and from 6% to up to 12% of the GDP for non-market costs. Who is paying for these economic costs? Considering total air pollution, welfare losses are the greatest in Eastern and Southern Asia and the Pacific, driven in large part by India and China. They are mainly due to exposure to outdoor ambient fine particles. However, indoor air pollution exceeds outdoor pollution in some regions in relationship with solid fuel burning, mainly in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. Economic activity contributes directly to occupational exposure of workers to pollutants and to atmospheric pollution at the local scale near commercial and industrial areas. But even people living far from the places where the polluting activities tend can be impacted. Atmospheric pollution is also associated with international trade and transport of goods and people. Which sector of activity benefits from the existence of air pollution? In the first place, health services with more medical consultations, more hospitalizations, and more health care. And strongly linked are the drugs and pharmaceutical industries. Obviously, all the economic sectors linked to air pollution prevention, such as air monitoring and air depollution, both indoor and outdoor, would not exist without air pollution, even if their economic weight is lower than the previous ones. Parts of the transport sector are also impacted with, for example, the development of electric vehicles. More generally, the mitigation of air pollution together with the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions represents for the industry a sector of research and development. Increasing economic growth and energy demand are suspected of leading to a significant rise in global emissions of air pollutants. But is air pollution always positively correlated to economic development? In other words, is air pollution inevitable? The answer is not straightforward, because it may depend on many factors, such as the degree of de development, the nature of the pollution, or the role of country-specific policies and institutions. Following the so-called environmental Kuznets curve, the improvement of the standard of living brought by the economic growth may change society's focus from financial interest only to social interest. At this inflection point, when the level of air pollution is at its maximum, emission control and air quality monitoring become important. However, 
According to the theoretical Kuznets curve applied to air pollution, middle-income countries should be more affected by air pollution than low- or high-income countries. But on a global scale, a pollutant like nitrogen dioxide appears to have higher concentrations in highly developed countries, contrary to the prediction. Conversely, on a global scale for PM2.5, middle-income countries are generally more affected by particulate pollution than low- or high-income countries, as predicted by the theory, but with many exceptions. Therefore, the relationship between air pollution and economic growth depends on multiple factors currently under study. Avoiding and reducing air pollution would lead undoubtedly to significant benefits to socio-economic welfare. It would also improve the productivity of companies and decrease healthcare costs. Cost-benefit analyses always agree that benefits far exceed air pollution abatement costs. A comprehensive study of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency concluded that benefits are at least four times superior than costs, and thus that air pollution reduction is a very good investment. Aiming at avoiding and reducing air pollution is therefore economically rational. It boosts innovation and encourages the development of a greener economy based on renewable energies. What's more, the services that natural ecosystems provide for free, such as clean air, are genuinely priceless.